Hi everybody, it's Nat from Studio Hacks here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the compressor in GarageBand. And this is also a general tutorial about how compressors work. This was prompted by a question I found on Quora. This person has asked, on my GarageBand compressor, the threshold is the setting above which all sounds will be compressed. And that's, that's correct. Uh, but the compressor is also supposed to boost the volume for low sounds. Where is the low threshold setting? So this person's a little bit confused as to exactly how the compressor works. And I'm going to show you uh, and clear this question up. I've already answered it in uh, Quora, so I will link to the answer I provided. But to give you a general idea of how the compressor works, I think that'll be a better way to start out. So I've got a GarageBand session here. And I have a vocal that I've recorded down here on this track. And I've actually used one of the default loadouts. If you open the library on the left using this little button right here, uh, these are presets for audio tracks. And I've used the natural vocal right here, this one here. And by default, it will actually already add a compressor on there. And if you want to see the compressor, you have to open the smart controls. So this one here is for the smart controls. And then down on the bottom here under the plugins, you should see here that uh, sometimes they have multiple compressors. So this one had a compressor by default and I have altered these a little bit. So let me click in the middle here to bring up the graphical user interface of this compressor. Now this is an extremely basic compressor. It has the two most important things, the compressor threshold and the ratio. It also allows you to do the attack. There is no release, um, which you normally find on compressors. This is just an extremely simple one for GarageBand. And then you've got this gain. So basically what happens is, let me find where my vocal is uh, on this track. There it is right there. So I'll just draw you something here. So you can see there we've got some little transients and I'll draw this transients. They appear sort of like this. Uh, and these are amplitude spikes on the waveform. And then you have an absolute threshold up the top. So this is kind of a, it goes up and down. Um, but you can think of it in your mind. If I draw a line down the middle, we, we can just forget one side. We can think about it on a sort of one, uh, two dimensional rather um, level here where we've just got spikes in amplitude right here at the noise floor is is um, where we can't hear anything at all. And up the top here, we've got zero decibels and FS, which is full scale. That's the digital roof. It cannot go louder than that or it will distort. So as I dial this threshold down right here, as I pull this down, that's going to pull the threshold of the compressor down towards these peaks. And as we get closer and closer, so when this is all the way up, it's sitting up the very top of the maximum noise there, the maximum volume, which you cannot exceed, or you get digital distortion. And as I pull this down, it's eventually going to hit the top of these amplitude spikes, the volume spikes. And then depending on how high we have this ratio here, it's going to compress them down, it's going to squash them. So with an eight to one ratio, that's quite a high ratio. It's really going to squash these down closer to basically really close to where this threshold is. It will just bump a little bit above that threshold. If I kept dialing it down, the compressor would hit a lot more of these peaks and it would then squash these uh, amplitude peaks down and down and down. So when you're compressing, you're actually reducing the overall volume, the overall amplitude. And to um, make up for the fact that you've removed that, we need to add in some gain on the way out. So this is the answer to this guy's question. He's saying, I've compressed it, but shouldn't it get louder when it's compressed? And usually, yes, because a lot of compressors have an automatic makeup gain. They add in extra gain on the way out to compensate for how much you've compressed the sound. This uh, particular compressor was a preset on the channel, so it already had one and a half decibels 
of makeup gain. So it's going to squash all of the peaks down. It's going to make the sound more thick, more, um, you know, the average sound is going to be very similar. So what we might have here, if, if we just have a quick look here, is these amplitude peaks like this. They're getting very close to that maximum volume. After it's been compressed, we might have something more like this, where the average uh, peak to sound ratio is a lot lower. So then you can push the volume up a lot higher, closer to that absolute ceiling, and you won't risk one of those big volume spikes going over and causing digital distortion. That's really why we're using compressors. We want to get something to stand out a bit. We want it to be thicker. We want it to pop a bit more, um, but we don't want it those individual little transients, the louder ones, we don't want those to hit that noise roof and make our tracks clip. So as a demonstration for your ears, I just want to show you how you can really make a vocal stand out in a mix using a compressor. So if I just have the vanilla settings here, um, well, actually, I might even just delete this compressor and then add one from scratch to see what the default settings are. So the default settings are a two to one ratio and it's got the threshold dialed down already. So I'm going to pop the threshold all the way back up the top. So it's not compressing anything at all. And there's no makeup gain. Let's have a quick listen to this little vocal in, in this mix. Okay, so I'm not really hearing as much of that vocal as I would like to hear. And I could simply turn the volume up on this track. Um, but as you can see, if you look a bit closely to that track there, that there are some louder notes with bigger peaks, big amplitude peaks, and there are some softer notes. So if I just crank up the volume of that track, I run into the danger of one of those big peaks over here going up over the top of the maximum acceptable volume and then it will crackle, it will fuzz, it will pop, it will really ruin my mix. So instead I'm going to first compress this sound, I'm going to pull the threshold down and then I'm just going to solo this track and let's see, have a listen to what this does. It should get a little bit quieter. Summer dreaming. Talk about that feeling. So my ears can hear that's that really sucked out, lifeless, overcompressed sound. So what I'm going to do is dial this down to an acceptable amount, which will probably be around minus 15, where it's just tapping the tops of the peaks and just compressing it nicely. Talk about that feeling. Okay, that doesn't sound too overly compressed, but now we need to actually add in some makeup gain because it's squashing those down a couple of decibels. So let's add in a couple of decibels on the way out. Should be a lot brighter and uh, louder now. Talk about that feeling. And to hear that in the context of the mix, now we should really hear this popping through in the mix. Talking about that feeling. That's better. Summer dreaming. As compared to when I switch that off. Summer dreaming. Talking about that feeling. And then you can hear when I switch it back on. Talking about that feeling just really cuts through, it's really there, it's present, it's sitting on top of the mix. So that's how the compressor works in GarageBand. This is a super simple compressor. You just dial down the threshold um, until you start getting the compression. And if you can't really hear it, if your ears aren't trained enough, somewhere around minus 15 or minus 20 is a great way to start. And then a ratio of somewhere between probably three, anywhere up to 10 uh, is good. So you don't want to go too extreme. You don't want to push this all the way up and you don't want this too low. Otherwise you really won't really get the effect. 
And then if you want to add some extra gain on the way out, you just simply dial up this gain. And this can be a really nice secondary volume slider as well. If you've pushed your volume up on a track and then it's still not loud enough and you want to just add in an extra bit of gain, you can use that as well. So I hope that was helpful. I will leave a link to my uh, answer to that question on uh, Cora. I think it's a, a fairly common uh, problem that people have understanding how a compressor works in their mind. They think it should make the loud things quiet and the quiet things louder. But now you kind of know a little bit more about how the how this works internally and how the compressor actually affects these waveforms, these amplitude representations of the sound that you've recorded. Uh, if you're interested in my new course, uh, which is creating electronic chill out pop music in GarageBand, I'll leave a link to that. That's a paid course on Udemy. And if you're having trouble with GarageBand, um, you want to learn all the basics. I also have a complete beginner's guide available on Udemy and I'll leave the link in the description to that also. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and I'll see you in the next video.